everyone, it's Jan with What You Make It, and I am back with another of our projects in the Fall Project series. I'm working on some more cards, and as I was working on these, I thought this would be a fun project to share with you for a couple of reasons. One, I want to show you this really cool die that I used over here. I think you get a lot of mileage out of it. It has a lot of impact. And I love this stamp set. This is a paper tray ink stamp set. I want to show that to you. But mostly, I want to show you a close-up, and I'll maybe insert a close-up of this coloring. Here are a few of the products that I used to create this card. I used Distress Ink. I use Memento Tuxedo Black as my stamping ink. It gives a really clean, crisp impression, and it will not bleed onto your marker tips. The stamp set that I used is Autumn Hills from Paper Tray Ink. It has lots of great images in it. I would highly recommend it for a great fall set if you wanted to add something to your stamp collection. And I also really fell in love with this die from Memory Box. It is the Piestra tile, and there is a lot of great detail in here. And I just think when you use it, you get a really great impact on your card. You have a little bit of a peekaboo sense with it, and very, very high impact. There is a lot of detail, and so you want to just take your time, not be impatient with it when you're running it through your your die cutting machine. If you're having a little bit of trouble with it, I suggest putting a shim in or moving it around just a little bit so that you get that clean impression. You can run it back through, use a little piece of masking tape or something to hold it in place. Just keep working with it because it is a great die. Um, and it comes with this envelope that's easy, easy storage. I also used a cuddle bug by Provocraft embossing folder, I use the herring bone. And to create all the texture on here, I use my colorless blender. Not sure why they call it the colorless blender because it's really a color eraser, but it is the tool that will help me get all of the texture. So you'll definitely need that. I love how you can use just a few colors. There's I really only used four or five colors, and I'll put those up on the screen. But with the colorless blender, you get a great um, extension of the colors that you use. I used my color chart, and I looked for autumn colors and just picked a few of the earth tones and some of the YR colors to work with. So the card base I started with, I do the die cutting while I still have my cardstock flat. I have already scored it in the middle. It's a standard A2 size card, which means it's four and a quarter by five and a half. And if you cut a sheet of eight and a half by 11 in half and score it in the middle, you will basically have that. You'll have an A2 size card. You can fold it. Do your, your die cutting before you do that. I just got a better um, result from it. So now I'm going to start coloring my image and I'm starting with my green and when I am stamping something that I'm going to cut out I go ahead and try the colors on the paper. This is a rustic cream. It's not a crisp white and I you can see I tested a few of the other colors out and I just just by testing them out, I know that it's a, a good color and what the, the true color of it's going to be on this, this rustic cream cardstock. So I started in with my, my green and you can see at first I'm being really precise, but I'm being much more surprised. I'm being much more precise with you than I am when I actually color because you can you can be kind of messy with this. You don't have to be very careful. You just take your your various colors and you can actually color over some of the the images. You can see here I'm I'm doing a little bit of work around the tree, but when I add additional color onto the leaves, it's going to to push that blue ink or whatever ink further down into the page. And that's, that is what um, is really cool about working with these Copic colors. I'm 
you'll see here that I, I start to be a little precise and then I just, I remember I'm going to be putting some texture on it, so I just kind of start coloring over it. Um, use the tip of your marker, and I turn my paper instead of trying to get my hand. I was, in order to stay in frame, I'm actually using, twisting my arm a little bit more. I turn the paper while I'm coloring. It helps me get a, keep a good sharp point on it. And I'm, I'm, you can see I'm just color blocking in here. I'm, I'm coloring in and I'm coloring over the little detail of the leaves because I'm going to add some other things. Now's when I start adding the, the texture with the colorless blender. And this, I just think this is magic. We're going to do all of this just by taking the colorless blender and here I'm putting little stripes. The more you, you go back and back over a shape or a stripe or a color, it will push more color down into the paper. If you want just a little bit of effect, do just a little. When I go to the red here, I am making a little bit wider, thicker, and that's because I'm, I'm turning the marker a little bit more on its side and pressing down into it. The reason that you want to go ahead and use your colorless blender before we go back in and add the leaves is because it's actually kind of pushing the color away and we'd, we'd lose the color of the leaves. So to create the clouds, I just press and push in little groupings of dots and then I move on and work on something else so that I can let the blender kind of take its full effect. Once it's had a couple of of minutes to impact the the coloring you can really see what it looks like it develops and you can go back and press a little bit more if you want more I, I say do it a little at the time I am not very good at doing straight line kinds of things so I find quick little strokes will give you that best frame but know you're gonna cut it out so don't worry too much about coloring outside the lines here so here's a little piece that I have cut of some orange, I think because I'm going to be using, the card base is a dark brown, I really wanted it to pop. It was a little too orange for me, so I took some rusty hinge and just did a direct, from the ink pad to paper, direct to paper technique. And that just really highlights the herringbone. I'm mostly doing it around the edges anyway, because that's all that's going to show. I just think it, it took that orange down just a, not, a notch so that it looks a little bit better when I have it all stacked up. Now I'm adding some adhesive here and then it occurred to me that you actually might be able to see what I meant by the marker, the colorless blender pushing ink down in there. If you see those stripes, they're actually where I've pushed the blender in and it's pushed it all the way through to the back. I think that sometimes helps you understand with your, if you can see what it's actually doing. Um, it's not removing color, it's actually pushing things down in. I'm going to use some dimensionals here and just pop that up for just a little more texture. It's a real clean and simple design. I use some chestnut liquid pearls. I think that it on the the spaces inside the die cut and then I created inside a cream plate a little insert that you can do some some writing on added a little little another one of the images from the stamp set and a Tim Holtz on the edge brackets die I just think it it makes a very finished card and very easy to to write on I hope you've enjoyed this project I'll be back with another one real soon, and in the meantime, be sure you save some time for creative play. See you soon.